So the website Down Detector detected a surge in outage reports from users at AT AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, Customer Cellular, Boost Mobile, U.S. Cellular, and Straight Talk. That uh, the um, reports of the system being down or outages began at 3.45 a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, The outages have been reported across uh, many major U.S. cities. It looks like uh, that it is back up. I'm not sure. They say they don't think this was a cyber attack, but how did all of them go down at the same time? I mean, that's kind of weird. Yesterday, uh, Israel had a cyber attack. Uh, It was from Iran, the Israelis say, uh, and it was an attack on their cell phone services. So quite a coincidence, but let's not jump to any conclusions. Let's see what what actually happened. Uh, <clears throat> cyber attacks are going to happen. At some point soon, <clears throat> we will have cyber attacks, and it will leave you vulnerable if that's what you depend on. Um, we are becoming more and more uh, a society that is connected in all things and absolutely incapable of doing any things uh, without our electronics. We hit a milestone yesterday. This is truly like landing a man on the moon, I think. Um, this is um, this is the first real uh, merging of man and machine, I think. I mean, we've had the electronic, you know, the bionic arms and things like that. But this is in your mind. It's Neuralink. Elon Musk came came up with it. And it is really tempting um, because this is, you know, this will be great to some degree. You'll be able to access information and have the whole Internet in your head. You want to speak French? Okay. Downloaded. Got it. I mean, it is really, isn't that the Matrix? Yeah, the Matrix, that, yeah, too. Right? Matrix. We're turning into the Matrix. That's the theme of the show today. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so that is now the beginnings of that happened uh, and was announced yesterday. Elon Musk said Neuralink is active in the first person to have one of the chips implanted in their brain. They have seemingly made a full recovery, uh, we, you know, so far. We don't know what the effects of this are or will be, um, but uh, Musk said the patient can now move the mouse around a screen just by thinking. So he is Bluetoothed himself to the screen. Crazy. Huh? I, it's incredible that they can do that. And, you know, also you look at the way Elon Musk does business. This is a lot of what he does, which is a lot of kind of just let's try it. Like there's a lot of like, hey, he let's said, give it a whirl. He said, I think yesterday or earlier this week that he had plans by 2029 to have a million people on Mars. And when I heard that, I thought there's no, oh, it's Elon Musk. Maybe. It, well, yeah. And then this is his goal with all of this stuff. I know. I, the The... I mean, he has, a, I think it's is it a T-shirt or something he wears that says Occupy Mars. Like, he, this is like the central idea of his life. Because, and this is part of it. Neuralink is part of it. He believes that we are on such a dystopian track right now that because of global warming, but also because of AI, he believes AI is just as dangerous as global warming. He believes we cannot compete with AI, uh, unless we can merge with it, okay? Because it will be operating at such high speeds. We don't have the processing capabilities for the speeds. You know, it's kind of like, it's kind of like dogs, you know, dog life, seven years is one year for us. Uh, it's like one year is like a thousand years for AI. So it's moving at such a rapid speed, we won't be able to keep up. So he believes that we need to be able to merge with the machine until we can get off this planet. 
I don't think he'll be taking Neuralink with him, or maybe he just thinks we won't have access to this AI on Mars. Uh, but that's really what is is driving him, driving his whole life. Really, really hard, because I know it feels creepy and there are risks and, and, and all of that, but it's like it's really, really hard to... To think about telling someone who's paralyzed that, nah, yeah, we we could we could make you move, but we we don't want to pursue that technology. Like I I don't know. I mean, it's just it's such incredible technology, and and for all of the other stuff that he's done, which is really impressive. I mean, Elon Musk is an impressive dude. Space travel, you know, uh, uh, the electric car stuff. I mean, I don't care about the electric car stuff that much, but it's still really impressive what he's been able to do. Everyone basically said you couldn't do it and no other company has been able to do it uh he did that he's done so many incredible things but if he was able to take you know people who you know with disabilities and and all these these issues that have been unsolvable throughout all of human history and somehow figure out a way to through Neuralink or something similar to solve that for all these people. It's, it would be the greatest so, thing he uh, ever accomplished by a, a long shot. My daughter, Mary, um, you know, had brain surgery about three, four years ago. Yeah, I remember. And it was, it was perfect for a long time. All of her seizures went away. Uh, <clears throat> earlier this year, I think it was in the summer. Um, she started to have breakthrough seizures and they are even on medication now. They're grand mall. They're they're, mm. they're just terrifying. Um, and uh, and I said to her, this is about four years ago, I said, honey, if you wait, Elon Musk is doing experience with Neuralink. And one of the things that Neuralink will do is it will, you know, patch all of the brain damage. It will take where when you have a stroke, it's like a highway. And there's all these highways running to different parts of your brain. And if you have a stroke, that highway is cut. So there are other paths to get to where it's going, but it makes it much slower. And sometimes it can't just get to where it's supposed to go. You can't get there from here. You can't get there from here. Mm -hmm. Um, And so Neuralink will connect the different parts of the brain back to each other. And doesn't need roadway. It's just Bluetooth to all the parts of the brain that it needs. So it would, in effect... Incredible. Yeah, incredible. Absolutely incredible. You know what she said to me? Dad, I think I'll wait because I know the Savior will heal me even if it's just in the afterlife. Jeez. Mm, what, what a giant... You raised a good kid there. Oh, geez. my God. I yeah. had nothing to do with that kid. Nothing That's to do That's incredible. With that. But so we have this now. We have what I've been talking about, the singularity, the merging of man and machine, and also what I've been talking about. I've been talking about this particular category for 30 years plus. <clears throat> and I said, there's going to come a time, merging man and machine. There's also going to come a time where you cannot believe your eyes or your ears. We're there now. Did you hear about... Uh, What was her name? Um, Bobby Althoff. Do you read about this? Mm. uh, um, Bobby Althoff, apparently a very sexually explicit video uh, of, she's a podcast person, uh, spread on X all day yesterday. Uh, This was, they tried to get it down as fast as they can, but it was just populating everywhere. And it's a complete deep fake. But you can't tell it's a deep fake. Okay? It looks absolutely real, apparently. Uh, and she had to come out and say, this, I mean, violation of me, you know, this goes beyond violation of privacy. I, what was the video? Was it like one of these... Yeah, it was sexually explicit. Sexually explicit. It was a, type it was a like, porn tape. Like the like the <clears throat> Taylor Swift stuff that came out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, but you cannot tell the difference. We are at the point to where you don't know what's real and what's not. We are also now, and I find this fascinating. We are, in one of my early books uh, where I talked about AI. Um, I remember saying 
don't fear the system. Don't fear AI. Don't fear the machine. Fear the programmers and the algorithms. Because whatever you put into that algorithm, it becomes reality. And it's the basis of everything. Okay? Google, they had the bard. What happened to the bard? The bard has become Gemini artificial intelligence. So <clears throat> Google, the Gemini now can not only answer all of your questions, but it can also just type in and it'll create a scene for you. Okay. Uh, apparently, it has no problem producing images of black Native American and Asian people when prompted, but it <laughs> refused to do so. With white people. I mean, I know this is serious, but it was also really funny. Like, if you request, like, uh, what? Give me a picture of a, a an antebellum plantation owner, and they would just it would just be like a, a, an Asian and a Native American, right? <laughs> like they it couldn't fight, just could not bring itself to create no. white people. <laughs> no, you're asked to show a per, a, a white person, George Washington. <clears throat> Gemini said. It could not fulfill the request because, and I'm quoting, it reinforces harmful stereotypes and generalizations about people based on their race. Amazing. Uh, yeah, you do the founders, and it would come up that like all the founders would be all these different, different races. races. Uh, it's important to remember that people of all races are individuals with unique experiences and perspectives. Reduce, reducing them to a single image based on their skin color is an inaccurate uh, statement and unfair we have to be more Wait, inclusive and equitable. That's our point. I know. Our point is we shouldn't reduce people to their skin color. You guys are constantly pushing that nonsense on us all the time. Quote, when you ask for a picture of a white person, you're implicitly asking for an image that embodies a stereotyped view of whiteness. This can be what? damaging both to individuals who don't fit those stereotypes and to a society as whole as it reinforces biased views. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So Fox followed this down the rabbit hole, and Google replied immediately and took it down and was like, oh, yeah, we're working on that. But are you? Right. Like, they obviously didn't intend for it to do this. But what they did put in there is bias. Is bias. And you're not just supposed to notice it. It's supposed Correct. to be much more subtle than Correct. it wound up turning out being. And, and that's what they're going to go back they're and fix. Right. They're not going to fix it and take that out. They're going to fix it so you don't notice it. By the way, AI currently is going throughout all of the history of the world all over. And it is subtly changing our documents, our history books, and everything else, anything that's online, if you don't have a paper copy of something, you're going to find yourself in your lifetime sooner rather than later going, well, no, wait, I know that was there. Mm -hmm. I was there. I saw it. What? And I know it was reported. What? It's being done right mm -hmm. now. <sighs> Dead Sea Scrolls in clay pots comes to mind. 